Bruchim Aboyim. Thank you very much for coming. Last week we um, did the gematria uh, the of the uh, number 18, which is again uh, Yud Ches. Again, we talked about Chai. So, in continuation with that, this week I think we continue with the 18th letter of the Hebrew alphabet, which is the letter Tzadik. Um, it has a gematria, the letter Tzadik has a gematria of 90. Its uh, shape is made up of a bent nun and a yud. The bent nun represents the Tzadik's extreme humility and readiness to submit to God. Again, God represented by the yud. As we know, this world was created with the hay and the world above with the yud. And yud always signifies one of God's names. Another interpretation is that the yud resting on the bent nun is an allegorically compared to a rider on the back of a horse as an allusion to God who lowers himself in order to accompany his children wherever they go, even in the Galut, even in the exile based in Amog and David. Now, according to the morale of Prague, the structure of the tzaddik alludes to the faith of the tzaddik. Should he suffer, alluded to by a nun, which alludes to a nefila, a descent, a downfall, the, and then the Yud, which represents God, is close by to rescue him. As stated in Tehillim 37.25, Lo re'iti tzaddik nazov, for I have not ever seen a righteous man forsaken. Now the Gemara in Shabbos 104a states that the tzaddik stands for a righteous individual bent in humility. The Gemara observes that the bent nun, although has already taught us the lesson of humility, so the Gemara asks why this lesson needs to be repeat, repeated with the letter Tzaddik. So the Gemara answers the Talmud that the written form of the Aleph base adds one symbol of humility upon another symbol of humility to emphasize the importance of this trait. Now why is it that <clears throat> sometimes we see righteous people suffer in this world? And the Gemara, the Talmud and Kedushan 4b states... Their suffering in this world is to atone for their sins so that they can receive undiminished reward in the world to come. The tzaddik who is bent in humility in this world will in the end be tall and erect like the final letter tzaddik in the world to come which is straight all the way down much like a vav based on an H. Yosef. Another interpretation is that the letter nun alludes to the Arana Kodesh, the Holy Ark. And the Yud alludes to Yosef HaTzadik, Joseph, whose coffin traveled along the Ark during the 40 years of the Jewish nation's sojourn in the desert, based on a Sefer HaTumah, Tamuna. In fact, it was the coffin of Yosef, before they even had the Ark, that caused the sea to split when the Jews went across. Why? It says that Yosef went against his nature by resisting the advances of Potiphar's wife, and this was a sign for the sea to go against its nature and split for the children of Israel. In Bereshit, chapter 1, verse number 4, the, the verse states, V'yarlokim is or kitov. And God saw the light, and it was good. The light that God found was good was the deeds of the tzaddikim, of the righteous individuals. This is alluded to by the gematri of the words, Ha'or kitov. The light was good, which has a numerical value of 259, which is the same numerical value as Hatzadikim, the righteous, based on a Yalkut Eliezer, Mizer of Tehava. Also, Shleim Amel, King Solomon, said in Proverbs in Mishle that he describes in 1025, he describes the righteous individual as a Tzadik Yesod Olam. That the tzaddik, the righteous individual, is the foundation of the world. A term that was used for Noah and for Yosef. Noah was able to remain righteous in an immoral and licentious environment. And who started a new world after the flood. Yosef, because he supported the populations of many lands during the great famine. He also earned the title of tzaddik, as mentioned before, by virtue of his moral strength and being able to resist the advances and temptations of Potiphar's wife. In the Zohar, 
Again, that's in the Zohar. It mentions it, 145. Also, Abravinu, Abraham our father, is described in Shir Hashiram Rabbah, chapter 3, verse number 5, as the foremost of all tzaddikim, because he taught mankind the idea of monotheism, which provided spiritual sustenance, a level which ranks even higher than the physical, based on Maral of Prague. In Pirkei Avot, chapter 5, verse number 22, at the end it states, Bentishim Lasuach, which generally is understood to mean that upon reaching the age of 90, a man declines physically. Rabbi Yonuk explains the word suach alludes to intensive, prayerful communication with God. As it states with Yitzchak, our father, that he went out, la suach besada, to pray in the field for a wife. And then immediately he saw Rivka, who would be his wife. It is the stage in life when one is more apt to involve himself in prayer and be in awe of the wondrous ways of God. Now the form of the letter Tzaddik resembles that of the letter Aleph more than any other letter in the Hebrew alphabet. As taught in Kabbalah, the mate of the Aleph is the master of the universe is the Tzaddik, the righteous one, upon whom the world stands. As it says again, Tzaddik is Sod Olam, Tzaddik is the foundation of the world. Now the word Tzaddik has a numerical value, a gematria of 204 which equals twice that of the, 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 the gematria, the numerical value of the word amuna, which is faith, which is 102. As the verse states, but tzaddik v'amunaso yichya, and a tzaddik, a righteous person, lives by his faith. 204 is also the gematria of the words yad yamin, the right side or the right hand, the side connected to kindness which is an allusion to a tzaddik's ability to bring down godly chesed, kindness, into this world. Now the word tzaddik is made up of four letters. Tzaddik, Dalid, Yud, and Kuf. Now the tzaddik alludes to one's requirement to say 90 amens each day. The Dalit and Gematri of four, four Kedushas every day. The Yud, which is 10, to say 10 Kadeshim, and the Kuf, 100, to say 100 blessings each and every day. 90, Sarah was 90 years old when she miraculously gave birth to Yitzchak after being barren her whole life. There were 90,000 elders that danced before the Urim, before the Ark, when Dovin and Melech brought it to Yerushalayim. The letter Tzaddik also represents the concept of Tzedakah, of charity. It's interesting, the word charity comes from the Latin word meaning love. Whereas in Judaism and Hebrew, the word tzedakah means righteousness. We don't give charity because we love someone. We do it because it's the righteous thing to do. The Alter Rebbe says in Tanya that one mitzvah, there's one mitzvah that will bring Mashiach, and that one mitzvah is tzedakah. Why? And basically, it's because it takes all the person's efforts to make a living. In fact, the Hebrew word for money is damim, and the word for blood is dam. Both have the same root. You can hear dam and damim. When a person gives tzedakah, what he's doing, he's giving to another from that which he has invested all of his times and efforts into, his blood. In the atbash, which we've mentioned before, Atbash is the Aleph, the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Tuf is the last. Bash is the second letter of the Hebrew alphabet. The Shin is the second to last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. So there are altogether 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet. 11 and 11, they can be exchanged. It's one of the codes. So in the Atbash, the word Sedaka, when you switch the letters, remains Sedaka. It doesn't change. Now the word for good deeds we call mitzvot. And it is spelled mem, tzaddik, vav, and tov. If you take away the tzaddik from the word mitzvot, the remaining letter spelled the word maves, which is death. The way for one to protect himself from death is to connect to a tzaddik, a righteous individual, and also to give tzedakah. In fact, one of the things we do is we give 
was customary that when you would go see a tzaddik, you would give him a kvittal, a request that would be written out, and you would also give him tzedakah. In fact, there's a famous story of the uh, of Lady Yiska Bardichev, where a poor widow came to him and handed him a kvittal, a request, and he asked where the money was, and she said she had none. He gave her back the kvittal and said, when you have some money, then come back. And it just so happened the shamus, his attendant, was there and heard this whole conversation. And a couple hours later, later the poor widow came back, a couple pennies. She gave the tzaddik again the kvittal with the couple coins. And he read it, gave her a bracha, a blessing, and she left. The attendant was livid. And he said to Reblevi, you love money so much you bothered this poor woman to come back for a few pennies. And very kindly, Reblevi looked at his shamus and said, God forbid. He says, who am I and what am I? Do you really think that I give a blessing, that it really has any power to it? When I give a blessing, it's dead. It, it's something that just sits there. How can I possibly get it to go to heaven? How can I give it to before God Almighty? And he said that what I do is that's why I take charity. That's the vehicle that takes their request to heaven. That's how God receives it and then answers it through the mitzvah of tzedakah. And that's why the idea of a tzaddik and tzedakah coming together to form one by giving a bracha and then sending it by, by, by carrier, if you will, of this mitzvah of tzedakah. And again, this is the way for a person to save himself, protect himself from death. Insurance policy, if you will. After the sin of the golden calf, God commanded that the children of Israel make him a dira betachtonim, a tabernacle, dwelling place on this earth. And every man between the ages of 20 to 60 would be required to donate what was called the makzit hashekel, a half shekel for the making of the tabernacle. This donation, this money, would act as an atonement for their souls. Now this donation was obligatory for as long as the temple stood, and even today we still continue to give the half shekel as a remembrance of this mitzvah. Now how can we be certain that a donation can act as an atonement for our sins? Money? Does it really work? We can learn it from the word makzit. The word consists of five letters. The middle letter of the word is a tzaddik, alluding to the word tzedakah, charity. The letter on either side of the tzaddik are chet and yud, which spell the word chai, which is life. And the two outside letters are a mem and a tuf, which spells the word meis, which is death. So from this word makzit, we learn that charity gives one life and protects from death. As it says in Mishle, that tzedakah tatzil mimavas, charity saves one from death. The tzaddik can also represent a righteous leader that we should attach ourselves to. Again, someone to direct us and help us through life. A guide. So by giving tzedakah and connecting ourselves to a tzaddik, we will hopefully be able to herald in the coming of Mashiach and Kenu quickly and in our time. Thank you very much for coming. God bless. Shabbat Shalom.